Nin explains the offside rule. The offside rule in association football, or soccer to some of you, is the rule in all of sports that confuses the biggest number of fans. But it's not difficult to understand or spot if you know what you're looking for. Firstly, you have to know what it actually is. It's a rule to prevent opposing players from just hanging around the other team's goalkeeper all game, so that when the ball comes to them, they just poke it into the net. As you can imagine, this would make an incredibly unfair and boring game, so the offside rule is there to prevent that. The official definition of the offside rule is this, but it's better to explain the offside rule in this flowchart which consists of two parts. Part 1. Are they in an offside position? To determine an offside position, an imaginary line is drawn from the second to last opponent. The last opponent is usually, but not always, the goalkeeper, or alternatively level with the last two opponents. The offside area is now anywhere behind this imaginary line. When the ball is played, members of the attacking team must be behind or level with this imaginary line to be onside. So, if any part of their head, feet or torso are in front of this imaginary line when the ball is played, they are in an offside position. Note that the decision is made at the time the ball is originally played, not when the ball is received by the teammate. So, this would be an onside position, as every member of the opposing team is behind this imaginary line. This would be an offside position, as one player is past this line when the ball is played. Onside position, offside position, onside position, offside position, onside, offside, onside, offside. Simple, right? But being in an offside position isn't enough to call the infraction of offside, hence why you need part two. Are they interfering by doing any of these? Whilst in an offside position, if you interfere with play by touching or contesting the ball, this is offside. Whilst in an offside position, if you interfere with your opponent by fouling or blocking their view, this is offside. Whilst in an offside position, if you gain advantage just by being there, i.e. you're the first one there to tap in a rebound off the crossbar, this is offside. If a player is not guilty of any of these, even while standing in an offside position, this is not offside. For example, this player is in an offside position, but because he doesn't touch the ball, he isn't interfering with any opponent, and he's not gaining any advantage by just standing there, this is not offside and the goal stands. So to recap, are they in an offside position, yes or no? If yes, are they also one of these scenarios? If the answer is yes again, it's offside, otherwise it's not. A few other things. Offside cannot be called from goal kicks, from any play within your own half, or throw-ins, or on corner kicks. However, offside can still be called from free kicks. That's literally it in a nutshell, but I know some of you have some hypothetical grey area questions. What if the ball is played and there is no second to last opponent? What if I'm ahead of them already? If that's the case, the line of the ball is used instead of the line of the second to last opponent. So the same rules apply. Anywhere behind the line of the ball is onside, anywhere in front of the ball is offside, etc. What happens if a player is exactly on the halfway line? Is this offside? The halfway line is classed as neutral, so any player breaching the halfway line at the same time the ball is played is considered to be onside. So if I'm in an offside position, when does it reset? When am I no longer classed as offside? Excellent question. A recent rule change by FIFA stipulates that if an opponent has made a deliberate attempt to touch the ball, and does, the original offside position no longer applies. So for example here, this player is clearly in an offside position, but because the opponent has made deliberate contact with the ball, offside no longer applies because the ball hasn't come from your own teammate, but rather your opponent. Therefore, this subsequent goal is onside and it counts. Remember, it's only offside if you receive the ball ahead of the line from your own teammate. If the opponent gives it to you, that's a different story. Wait, if this is the rule, 
can't the opposing team try and run forward together to make the offside area bigger? Yes, they can, and that's exactly what they do. Defending teams will try and force opposing players in an offside position by running forwards together, usually in a straight line. This is known as the offside trap, and it's a tactic used by defending teams to eliminate attacks and regain possession of the ball. When done correctly, it robs the other team of otherwise good goals. When done badly, disaster. So, to summarize, are they in an offside position, yes or no? If yes, are they one of these scenarios? If the answer is yes again, it's offside, otherwise it's not. If you found this video at all helpful, please be sure to like, share and subscribe. And if you want other things explaining to you, let me know in the comment section below and I'll consider doing so. Thank you very much and we'll see you in the next video.